Thank you, Dory. Welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Happy Valentine's Day. My name is Catherine Lavender and I'm the data project manager for NACTA, the aging archive at ICPSR. Today's webinar is Loving Longitudinal Data, Added Value Access to NACTA Collections Using the NACTA Collectica Portal. Today I'm going to, I'm going to talk about um, NACTA and give you a little bit of an introduction. Uh, again, we're the aging archive within ICPSR, and I'm going to talk about the NACTA Collectica Portal, what it is, what does it offer, benefits of accessing NACTA data via the portal and the NACTA website, and more resources and events. So uh, NACTA is the National Archive of Computerized Data on Aging. We are funded by the National Institute on Aging. We began as a research concept in about 1978 and were supported by the Administration on Aging. So we have um, more than 40 years of experience preserving and sharing data on aging in the life course. We were officially funded in 1984 by NIA and we do provide mostly quantitative public use data. We do have some restricted collections, uh, I think maybe roughly 40, but for the most part, we have public use data. We also offer curated and self-published data sharing options, just like ICPSR because we are part of ICPSR. So if you've used data from ICPSR, you will be familiar with NACTA's data access as well because we are one and the same. Uh, just a fun fact, in the 90s, we had 28 public use data sets first offered on our site, and now we have more than 13,000. And everything on our site is free to use. So um, I want to talk a little bit about our goals with longitudinal data on aging. NIA is interested in ensuring that the data collections and research they support are widely used. With this in mind, we aim to increase discoverability of longitudinal data on aging, highlight potential of and across research projects, projects excuse me, for reuse, encourage quality standards and variable metadata, promote multidisciplinary use of data, ensure longitudinal data is made available in a user-friendly format, and follow fair principles of data management and sharing. And just to go into the FAIR principles, if you haven't heard about these, um, I have a little bit of a summary of what FAIR means and then how ICPSR adheres to these principles. So FAIR stands for findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. And there's some definitions on what each of those mean um, with respect to data management sharing. And a lot of them revolve around clear metadata that's um, human and machine readable, clear access to the data, uh, interoperability, um, so uh, you know, data and applications um, can be used together or integrated, and reusability, um, so metadata and data should be well described so they can be replicated or combined in different settings. And um, when we share the slides, you'll have a link to the FAIR site where you can read more. What ICPSR does, and NACTA, uh, by extension, we use GOIs, digital object identifiers. We provide quality descriptive metadata, um, machine accessible data. Our metadata is available through standard protocols and information about access restrictions is embedded in the metadata. Um, a lot of other uh, sites will harvest our metadata for reuse and we have um, the technical capability for that. And uh, our metadata is in a standard format and we use controlled vocabularies that are machine accessible. And our metadata contains internal links to related resources. Uh, lastly, our metadata uses accepted standards and um, the metadata and data are available in widely used file formats with license information included. Um, I'm not going to get into this today, but if you're curious about metadata standards um, and data standards, uh, ICPSR uses DDI, the Data Documentation Initiative, and you can find out more about DDI by going to the DDI Alliance website, uh, ddialliance.org. 
But what you should take away from that last slide is that metadata is the key to data um, and to fair data. So um, I wanted to highlight how metadata makes data discoverable. And uh, you'll see this throughout my slides um, that I show both from the NACTA website, Data Access, and the portal. Um, and just to clarify, when we talk about metadata, there's study level metadata, which is like a study title. So a research project title, the PI, a description of the data collection, uh, subject terms at that collection level, like this particular study collected data about families or something like that. Collection dates, sampling, universe, data types. These are all study level metadata examples. Variable level metadata would be things like variable names, variable labels, value labels, missing designations, question text associated with a variable, if it's from a survey, um, and variable concepts, which might be new to some of you, might not be new to all of you, but variable concepts can be thought of similar to subject terms, but at the variable level. It's, it's a way of grouping variables together. So um, I'm gonna start with examples from searching the NACTA website and you'll see some of that, well, you'll see that all of those examples are incorporated throughout the ICBSR and NACTA websites. There are multiple ways to search NACTA and ICBSR sites for data, but the default view is by study. You can also search by related publication, variable, series, and non-study site content. A study, just to clarify, represents a data collection and can contain one or many data sets. A series is more than one study, which are intended to be used or analyzed together. As we go through this presentation, I'm going to refer to series often because as the aging archive, we host multiple series of longitudinal data collections, such as the Midlife in the United States study, the National Social Life Health and Aging Project, American Changing Lives, and many others. Some of which you see on the screen here. I did a search for love because it's Love Data Week. And you can see that we have almost 200 studies related to love, 65 related publications, almost 3,000 variables, 32 series, and apparently 17 site posts or site content related to love. Okay, so since the default view uh, for searching is at the study level, I wanted to talk a little bit about study pages. So um, study level metadata at ICBSR and NACTA, this is reflected all in our study pages. That's where you're going to go to get everything you need to know about a study, including whether it's part of a series. You can see the study title, the version information, PIs, and then there's a field for series. This is an example from our MIDAS series, the Midlife in the United States, the DOI. And then I have collapsed these fields for the sake of ca capturing this screenshot, but um, ordinarily the project description is expanded. And so you could click through each of those and read to find out, is this study right for your research purposes? One of my favorite things about um, our website, ICBSRs and NACTAs, um, it's the variable level metadata view. And so this example here is taken from MIDAS. I typed in a search for heart and um, was led to this variable here, um, just you know by clicking on what uh, came up in the results. And you can see that um, for variable level metadata, we see the variable name the variable label, the question text displayed right there, and then the values and their uh, frequencies unweighted. So this is a really nice view. And then also on the left-hand side, um, you see variables that come after this variable in the data file. And then there's also some great breadcrumbs at the top there that kind of show you the variables from uh, the MIDAS Refresher 1 study, which is part of the MIDAS series. So um, if you're searching across variables, 
uh, you would go over to that third tab in your search and you can see that's my search for heart and there's more than 10,000 variables related to the term heart. And uh, this is interesting because there's this option to select certain variables or compare. And so I'm gonna walk through a little bit of that right now. So say um, you want to compare variables across a series and you already know that you need to look at a specific series. I'm going to use the National Social Life Health and Aging Project, for example, here. I went to the NSHAP series page, clicked on the variables tab, typed in my search term, difficulty dressing, and I'm gonna use this consistently throughout the slide um, just for the sake of comparing searching. And you can see that for uh, variables related to the idea of someone having difficulty dressing, we get a stacked view and I can see that there's um, this type of variable present in rounds two and three just from the screenshot in NSHAP. It's also in round one, but that was lower and you can't see it because you know, it's a snapshot. So this is one way to search a series at the variable level um, from the series page. The other way um, relates back to that select and compare feature that you saw a couple slides ago. Um, so if you were to just search the site for your term difficulty dressing, and you still wanna narrow down by a series, we have filters on the left-hand side. I've highlighted the NSHAP series in green here. And you know, I'll go in and sort other ways if I need to. Select the variables that I want. I can see that dressing. Um, I want the public use variables. So I've selected those. There are three of them because there are three rounds of NSHAP. And when I hit compare, this is the view that I get of this variable comparison. Again, this is from the NACTA and ICPSR site. It's a very nice stacked view. And we can see that um, the order is a little bit of out of sorts. Um, we see the variable about difficulty dressing for round two first, then round three, then round one. And um, what I like about this is that you can see the question text right here. You can see the time period and universe. That's kind of um, nice just for consistency. And so this is a great way to kind of um, if you're looking to use multiple data sets, this is a great way to compare variables from the ICPSR and NACTA websites. Once you decide that you want to download data, you would need to uh, visit each study page to download the corresponding files. And um, for example, I've gone to the NSHAP round two study page and to the data and documentation tab, and then the public use core data, and then there's a download button there, and that's where I would select which files I want. So um, from here, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we started working with the portal. Uh, we already work to make data on aging discoverable, as I've shown you, uh, but the default search for ICBSR is by study. We created this longitudinal data topics chart initially to have a resource to point secondary data users to in order to give them ideas on how they might use a variety of data resources together or to show complements and substitutes. It was kind of just something, you know, uh, we were like, well, you know, we get a lot of questions. We, we wanted the cheat sheet and we thought we'd share it. And you can find this on our site. Um, again, when we share the slides, uh, this will be hyperlinked and it could take you right to it. And from our site, uh, you can see there are hyperlinks to each of those studies or series. Some other work that we started to do um, was that, you know, we have that great stacked view of the variable comparison, but you kind of have to know what you're looking for and where you're going to get to it. Um, so, for NSHAP and a couple other longitudinal series, we started creating these variable crosswalks. And so you can see um, that we created this Excel crosswalk for NSHAP to help secondary data users officially locate common variables and question groups across the three time points. Uh, often I would have uh, researchers send me requests 
and they were just having trouble finding out if what they needed was available across all the waves. Uh, it was just hard for them to be sure if we didn't have the data or, or you know, it, again, it's a study default view. So, um, you know, it can be a lot for someone to weed through. This work ultimately led us to investigate ways we could make something like this available through a digital platform on our site, which led us to Collectica. Collectica, uh, they're a small team and uh, they do work with DDI, uh, specifically DDI lifecycle, which is ideal for longitudinal data. Again, I'm not gonna get too much into DDI, but I wanted to highlight just kind of how we got here. They're a great team. And um, so we have some, uh, we have NACTA, which is federally funded by NIA, and then NIA also funds a small project, we call it the Interoperability Project, and that's what allows us to do this work and, um, you know, purchase the portal from Collectica. So, just to kind of talk a little bit about the portal, we first went live with it in October of 2019, so it's still young. There are four longitudinal series in the portal currently, two cross series comparisons, I'll explain. We expect to add two more series and a new cross series cognitive comparison this year. There's only public use data in our portal. Uh, it's mostly variable metadata at this time, but some data are available through the portal for download. We consider this exploratory work right now. Um, again, our core funding is for the aging archive within ICBSR, and this is just some additional work we do to try to add value to longitudinal data sets. Uh, we're investing in enhancing the discoverability and hopefully accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of select data sets by creating conceptual variable groups and conceptual, conceptual variable metadata. So uh, the series that we currently have in the NACTA portal, NSHAP, the National Social Life Health and Aging Project, project I've mentioned it's three rounds. Um, that was the first one that we added. Oh, MIDAS, the Midlife in the United States study, they have 28 studies. Um, MIDAS actually hosts their own portal. We host all of their data from the NACTA website. So if you need whole MIDAS files, you come to us, but if you want to explore across all of the MIDAS studies and download custom data sets, you can do that through our, or well, you can do that through download data through the MIDAS portal, but you can explore through ours. Uh, we also compared NSHAP to MIDAS since we had them both. Uh, we also compared NSHAP to the National Health and Aging Trends Study and HATS. And hats also host their own portal. We call these cross series comparisons. Um, and you can see that since NHATS has, has their own portal, we borrowed their variable metadata and it's displayed in our portal. That's 10 rounds. We recently added the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging, TILDA. Um, it's an HRS sister study, and that we only have three waves of that, um, although they have, I think. Um, five waves of data available right now, which we're working to add four and five currently to our NACTA site. At any rate, all of these series focus on older populations, again, the aging archive, mostly US national, and they have some measures of cognitive and physical health. Um, that's one of our key uh, areas of focus is cognition um, and you know Alzheimer's and dementia related research. So uh, how you might get to the portal from the NACTA site is if you're looking at the NACTA site, we have this more data resources tab and you can see there's, I've highlighted NACTA Collectica portal and that's what the page looks like. Talks a little bit about what it is and you know some key features. From there, there's that access the um, NACTA Collectica portal button and you would be led to a login page. Um, for any of you who've used ICPSR data or by extension NACTA data, you know that to download data, you need a My Data account registration. It's free and very easy. We collect very minimal info. The same is true for the Collectical Portal of that it's 
free and easy and we collect minimal info, but it is a separate system. So your login credentials for the portal will not be your My Data account unless you make it that way, which is perfectly fine. Okay, um, so it, you could log into the portal and I'm gonna walk through some of the features. So um, this screenshot here is an example of me doing a search for difficulty dressing. I filtered by variables and series, kind of like how I would on the NACTA site. Um, you know, you have to select the variables tab and you have to select your series if you wanna uh, refine your results. And so, um, you know, uh, again, we're focusing on NSHEP and I wanted to kind of show how you might find them um, across each access point. So this difficulty dressing, you can see that the variables are there. We're looking for that dressing variable. It's the third one down. When I click on that variable dressing, um, it takes me right to that particular one is from round three. And this is what the variable, single variable display in the portal would look like. So that variable view, um, you know, it's the same, just like from our NACTA site where you have the variable name, the variable label, the question text, and then you have um, the categories, the, you know, and the value labels and unweighted frequencies. If you're searching from uh, the Collectica portal for difficulty dressing, and let's say you don't filter by variable, but you stay within series, you'll get results for conceptual variable groups, which are really cool because this will allow you to see uh, difficulty dressing results across the three time points. And so I clicked on that first result, difficulty dressing, conceptual variable group. You can see that it gives a lot of information. So here is what it looks like when I click on that. What we're seeing is the conceptual variable of difficulty dressing. And what that means is you're seeing that dressing variable across all three rounds of NSHAP. So do you remember, and if you don't, it's okay, because I have a slide for it later, the stacked view, the stacked view of difficulty dressing. Um, what you're seeing here is that the portal allows for a table or like a side-by-side -side view of each of those three time points in order, round one, round two, round three, and their categories. And we can see that NSHAP stayed very consistent over time. Um, they used the same types of value labels across the three rounds for this question of, did someone you know, have any difficulty dressing? Um, you know, and you know, we can see the unweighted frequencies across all three time points too. So this is really cool. Um, if you have questions about concepts and how we create these, I will touch on it just very high level, but you can always reach out to us um, and, you know, pick our brains about this. So um, another feature in the Collectica portal uh, that we have for NACTA is this explore feature. And when you click on that, it will show you um, the options. We have those two cross series comparisons and then the four series. I'm gonna stick with NSHAP as an example. And this is the conceptual view of the single NSHAP series. Excuse me. So what you're seeing here is that on the left-hand side, all of the conceptual variable groupings for NSHAP. I selected physical health, functioning health, and this occurred in their in-person questionnaire. And I selected getting dressed. That's the subcategory or, or sub-conceptual variable group. And you can see that, um, you know, that this dressing variable for difficulty dressing is here, in fact, for all three time points throughout NSHAP. So if you were just curious and you wanted to know, okay, is this particular topic present across NSHAP or any of these other studies before getting into the exact variable view, you just want to know, if, is it there? This is a great way to see it. And it's, you know, that side-by-side -side comparison. 
the cross series comparisons, okay, uh, this is the, what you're seeing here is just an overview of the main conceptual variable groupings for NSHAP and NHATS and NSHAP to Midas. And so what these reflect are all the concepts that these two series, these two longitudinal uh, series on aging have in common. And they have a lot in common, uh, health behaviors, depression, physical health, um, pain, activities of daily living and more. And so what we're trying to do is highlight the potential of you know, wider use of these NIA funded studies together because they're both capturing uh, US national uh, samples of older folks and basically how they live their lives. An example here of the cross series comparison in the portal, you can see I, I'm showing uh, the NHATS and NSHAP cross series comparison. And this is that difficulty dressing again. And um, this is made possible by um, these comparability notes. You can't see them great, but not here on the left where the concepts are, but just to just you know to the right of that, you'll see item name and difficulty dressing. And then there's this little eye in a circle and it says comparability, need harmonization, and then comparability related concepts. So this is our way of letting um, secondary data users know what kind of work they have to do to actually use the variables across these different series together. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. So these comparability notes, uh, match types is also how we refer to them, are explained here. Uh, we have four directly comparable, need harmonization, one to many or many to one, and related concepts. And so you can see that between NSHAP and NHATS, um, for something collected like respondent weight, there's no manipulation needed to compare across these two series. They're an exact match. For something that might need harmonization across the two series, the example here is, does the respondent wear glasses? And you can see that these questions are phrased just a little differently. And they have slightly different uh, categories, response categories. And so um, this is our way of saying that they're pretty close. They can be compared, but you would need to do some things to them in order to make them match so that you could compare, um, you could analyze them against each other, you know, or together. Then we have one to many or many to one. And this is when multiple variables in one series combined to a single variable in another or vice versa. And the example here is whether or not the respondent uses a cane or walker. We can see that in NSHAP, this is combined, uh, the cane and walker idea are combined into one variable, but cane and walker are separate in NHATS. So uh, you would need to know this in order to say, you know, are they comparable? And then the, um, the like lightest type of comparison across the series would be something we call related concepts. And this means that they're only related to subject matter, but the variables don't match up enough to really be compared to each other. So, um, you know, the examples here are uh, related to breathing issues and they're asked differently. And then also their, their um, categories are different. Um, they reflect the same thing, but it's still, you know, one use zero one, the other one used one, two for yes, no, and so, yeah. How this looks in the portal, these comparability types, um, you can see an example here, uh, again, where the comparability note says, okay, many to one for this mental health within NSHAP, and then, you know, also um, in NHATS, and this is, you know, self-rated memory or cognitive impairment, and you can kind of see how they don't, uh, they, for, for cognitive impairment, um, these are many of these variables relate to one throughout NHATS. Many in NSHAP relate to one throughout NHATS here. So let's say that you are looking in the portal and you decide you want to download some 
types of things. What can you download? Um, you can create a custom variable basket. In this example, I'm going back to difficulty dressing and I selected that whole concept group across the uh, NSHEP and HATS cross series comparison. So I didn't need to go to one or the other. I just went to that comparison and it grabbed both for me. I added it to the basket. There's a little plus sign you can use. I'm gonna go back one. You see these plus signs next to, um, uh, like to the right of the conceptual uh, categories, um, groups on the left. There's these plus signs. You use those to add something to a basket. And then um, you can see that for NSHAP, you have the ability to download data or metadata, but for NHATS, you can only download metadata. This is because we only host the variable metadata for NHATS. You would need to go to the NHATS portal to get their data. NHATS hosts all of their data, even from our NACTA site, we do not have NHATS. Um, they do a, a very good job of hosting their own data. And so um, this is just our way of trying to let data users know the potential um, of their data, but then also with some data we do host. Uh, for NSHAP, you could download a CSV or an SPSS data file. And for either uh, NSHAP or NHATS, because it's variable metadata only here, um, you could download a PDF codebook, a CSV, an Excel, or a DDI lifecycle XML file. So that's the kind of documentation available that you can download. And it's customized. You can make uh, codebooks uh, from our cross-series comparisons and then go to NHATS and know exactly what you need. Um, you know, or just kind of like gather some ideas for potential research. So um, I just wanted to kind of bring it home here. On one side, you see the stacked variable compare feature from the NACTA and ICBSR sites. And this is that difficulty dressing from NSHAP rounds one through three. And then uh, I have the view of this in the NACTA Collective Portal. Um, and they're, they reflect relatively the same information, but in very different ways. And so um, we wanted to kind of show you this work we're doing. And we, you know, if you have feedback, we appreciate it. Um, I'm going to provide a user support email where you can reach out and let us know if you have any questions. But yeah. Great stack view from ICPSR. You have the question text right there and everything. A little bit harder to see the differences or similarities between the codes in the stacked view, um, but still a great whole picture. And then from the portal, um, we kind of took away the work of you having to read the question for you. We said, in fact, these are comparable. And so that's, you know, in the portal, the question text is there, but at this point, you already know that they're the same because they're grouped by concept of dressing. Um, and so you can very easily see the code comparison and uh, unweighted statistics comparison in the portal. Okay, so uh, just to go through a summary of benefits of accessing data through the NACTA site or the portal, either way, I like to tell people that if you are coming to NACTA, the website um, you know, that we work with ICPSR on, it's a great way to get whole data files and documentation in multiple file formats. You get usage, usage statistics, um, so you can see how many other people have downloaded those data and materials. You also have related publications um, that you can review to see what other people have done with those data. And um, I, you know, mentioned before that we now have more than 13,000 data sets, but really this also means we have more than 1 million variables across 1,600 studies from the NACTA site. So I call this the complete picture of a data collection. Um, and that's the kind of access you would get there. From the NACTA Collectica portal, you get a side-by-side -side comparison view of the variable display, um, which is great for kind of knowing immediately uh, are you gonna be able to use this longitudinal series for what you need? Um, 
you can get custom data files and documentation of selected variables. Um, so you don't have to weed through the entire data set or code book. You can just get the ones you want um, by reading through the concepts that we've created in the portal. And you can search selected longitudinal aging studies within and across theories, um, you know, very efficiently. And uh, so, you know, that they both have something different. The Collectica portal uh, offers a customized data view of longitudinal, oh, excuse me, customized data view of longitudinal series. So um, a little bit about what it takes to get the data to the portal. Uh, you know, I mentioned we have about 40 years of experience preserving and making data available through the NACTA and ICBSR site. Um, and I would say that a lot of our work with the portal couldn't be done without the work we do with ICBSR. Um, you do need knowledgeable staff. If you were going to do this, if you're thinking like, okay, what do I need to do something like this? Knowledgeable staff, people who are familiar with navigating data sets, we have a couple team members who complete the variable comparison work and they are awesome. Um, you need complete and descriptive variable metadata. And, and you know, this kind of goes back to that fair and how metadata is the key to data. You really need to make sure that the variable metadata is good quality. You might need crosswalks um, that provide structure to multi-wave data in a consistent manner. This is a static approach. I gave an example of this uh, when I talked about some of our early uh, investigating with NSHAP. Question concordance, this is a dynamic refinement to a crosswalk. Um, this is more of the work that those staff members I mentioned do. They you know, go through and create those concepts um, for at, at the variable level. And uh, the, what makes the portal work possible is DDI lifecycle standard and the variable cascade. If you have questions about that, this is not the place for it here at this webinar, but you can email us. Um, and then you do need a Collectica designer and portal. They are, they are the key players in this right now. And if you wanna find out more about the details that went into some of this work, we have a working paper and I have a link to that in the slide that you can check out later. We're gonna begin wrapping up here and then I'll allow some time for questions. Um, so next steps for us, I mentioned we wanted to add a couple more series to the portal this year. Uh, basically, this is our goal. We want to keep adding more data and metadata to the portal to allow for more discoverability, more potential reuse. Um, HALSI, the Health and Aging in Africa, a longitudinal study, um, longitudinal series, excuse me, uh, waves one through three, we expect to add this year. Uh, the panel study of income dynamics, PFID, we've selected some cognitive items from, I think, 40 years of data uh, that we plan to put in the portal. So these are going to be interesting to add, and we're excited. We are working to compare some cognitive items from the health and retirement study to NSHAP, and there is some potential comparison across more than two series for specific concepts that are cognition focused. So uh, cross-series comparison, but yeah, greater than two. That's going to be, it's going to be good. And we're exploring cross-country common concepts. So if you were to explore the Collectica portal site and, you know, you'd see that lots of other places have portals and, you know, some of them are international and we're trying to um, network with those people doing that work so that we can say, okay, well, if we've got these cognitive items in NSHAP and NHATS and MIDAS and the same cognitive items are present in international studies, there's even more possibility, research possibility. Here's that email I mentioned, icbsr help at umh.edu. You can ask us questions about data, about access, other concerns about this portal presentation that I just gave you. You can email us anytime. And say you've already done some work with our data and you wanna share your syntax. We have the Open Aging Repository. This is part of, part of NACTA. And this is just a shameless plug. Uh, you know, If you've used any of our studies, say you've used NSHAP and you're like, oh, I did this thing with NSHAP, I think other people can use. 
if you deposit it with our OAR, our self-published repository, um, and you use good metadata, your syntax will be discoverable along with everything else on chat. I wanted to highlight that we have podcasts and researcher interviews, and these are a nice way to find out some stories behind the data. We've had 11 of these so far, and um, I think they're good, but I am biased. You can check them out. They're on our YouTube playlist. Upcoming events. There's more Love Data Week events. Check out the ISPSR site. We will be present exhibiting at PAA, the Population Association of America Conference in April. We'll also be at the Gerontological Society of America Conference in November. So come and visit our booths if you're there. And, you know, check the ISPSR events page for any more details. If all of this was a lot and you kind of want things consolidated, we do send out a quarterly newsletter and you can subscribe. Um, and there's access to subscribing from our homepage. That's it. If you have any questions, let me know. You can also scan this QR code or go to our link tree and there's links to all the important things. And then there's this nice little image that I mentioned, we have more than a million variables on the NACTA site across more than 1600 studies. So I just wanted to place that there, um, you know, just a brag because we love data and we love longitudinal data. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Catherine. I am seeing a couple of questions come in. Everyone, please type your questions into your Q&A window. Uh, the first one, how do you choose which data or studies are added to the portal? So um, we were looking for uh, longitudinal data on aging that had uh, two or more time points. Uh, we also wanted to be familiar with a series uh, at first, kind of know how consistent it was across time before we started doing this work. And that's kind of what led us to pick NSHEP first. We already had the data. We knew they were pretty consistent. They had three time points. And so uh, that that's how that one got chosen. The other ones were chosen uh, sort of as a matter of convenience because Midas already had a portal and has already had a portal. So someone had already done all of that variable metadata work that I've mentioned. Um, and so then our team went through and could do the comparisons a little bit more efficiently, the cross series comparisons. So some of it was convenience. Um, we chose Tilda to add recently because Tilda is this great, you know, international example uh, and it's an HRS sister study. And again, we kind of were familiar and the consistency. So, so far, because this is exploratory work, you know, it's, um, it's, it's been just kind of making sure that our uh, resources that we're using match the effort that we can allow. Um, but really it has to be longitudinal data on aging, NIA funded and good metadata. Another question. Are there any differences in versions between the data on the NACTA site versus the portal? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, the NACTA site, um, the one we're part of ICPSR with is funded by NIA and that is our core work. Um, so that's the authoritative uh, version and source for the data. And, and when the version changes, it's gonna change there probably first. Um, we're still, because this is exploratory work with the portal, we're still kind of figuring out what's the best workflow. So that's not to say that it will always be the case that the version will change there first. Um, you know, if we're, if for example, with Halsey, uh, with wave three, if we find we can add that to the portal faster, we might go that route and then you'll see it come up on the NACTA site. But yeah, there, there can be, we're trying to minimize them. Um, but if we add more and more data, that could be more and more of an interesting challenge that we kind of have to figure out. I think I see another uh, question in the Q&A. Is there a reason NACTA went with a collect portal and not an open source or institutional government research data repository such as Dataverse? And what happens if, when, and SHEP wraps up? Um, great question. 
So yes, there is a reason. Um, Collectica, as I mentioned, is kind of the key player when it comes to DDI lifecycle. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of downplaying it. They, anybody using DDI lifecycle is using Collectica portal right now. It's not my impression that Dataverse offers this kind of feature. And we already make data for NSHEP available through ICPSR. And I, you know, because we're federally funded, uh, NACTA is completely free and open. And so with ICPSR's infrastructure, we provide multiple file formats, including R, which is open source. And, um, you know, with the ICPSR infrastructure, you do get that DDI codebook variable metadata. So, um, so I said I wasn't going to get into this, but I kind of have to. So ICPSR uses DDI codebook. This is what makes the social science variables database possible. It's what makes the variable search from the website possible. So this means that because we use DDI codebook, users can search at the variable level, um, which is great. Uh, we went with Collectica because they're using DDI lifecycle and that has key components that make longitudinal data connections possible. And so um, I don't know if I'm answering the question appropriately, but essentially um, all the access is still free and open, um, but Collectica is what's using DDI lifecycle. And so what happens if when NSHEP wraps up, um, as far as I know, NSHEP is still going, but their data will always be valuable. I mean, NSHEP has such a variety of um, topics that are reflected in the data. My director, he likes to say that NSHEP is one of the few uh, longitudinal studies on aging adults that treats people like adults. And so there's questions from, their opinions about their neighborhood, do they feel safe, to their partner history and behavior. And so it's it's a great resource. Um, and if they wrap up and we still have it in the portal, then that means we won't have as many tweaks to it to continue to add rounds, but and Chef's still going. Thanks for that question. We had one come in through the chat. How easy. <laughs> Is it to find disease specific population like people with uh, HIV and aging cohorts? Well, from the ICBSR site, um, you would go and you would search, and this would be any ICBSR site, not just NACTA. Um, when you search from NACTA, you're searching specifically uh, studies that are about data on aging. Um, mainly NIA funded studies. When you search ICPSR, you're searching across all of ICPSR's uh, topical archives and the members archive. So um, the filters are gonna be important because ICPSR has a ton of data. And you know, ICPSR also has the health and medical care archive. They also have um, uh, the NADAP archive, which I believe focuses on uh, adolescent health and um, HIV specific populations um, in addition to substance abuse. But anyway, uh, so how easy is it to find? I mean, there is no easy button. There's a lot of reading. You would go, you would search, put in your term, you'd want to filter, um, you know, by like, I would say relevance probably, unless recency is most important to you. And then kind of narrow in, you could add years um, parameters into the filter. Uh, I don't know, as far as sample, you can also filter by um, whether something is like cross-sectional data or longitudinal data, but I don't think you can filter by sample size. Um, so yeah, you need to read. Uh, one of my favorite things to tell people to do um, is to try start searching by related publications because when you do that, uh, for any related publication comes up, our bibliography team has tagged which study uh, that particular publication used. 
And so you might find someone else did research similar to what you're thinking, and then you can see exactly which data set they use. And so, I don't know, I mean, some things are easier than others, but you can't avoid the reading. Well, thank you everyone for the questions. And if you have more, email us at um, icebsr-help.edu. I think I got that right. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And, you know, subscribe to our newsletter. We'll keep you updated about our work with the portal. And eat some chocolate today if you like chocolate. You know, particularly heart-shaped. To be festive. Okay. Thanks so much for your help, Dory. Thank you. And thanks everyone. And happy Valentine's Day for those who celebrate and happy Love Data Week. Bye everybody. <laughs>